And hello all, this is Lala Madness, and thank you for tuning in to A Moment of Madness. So, the reason it's A Moment of Madness, as you know, my show is very from the Fierce Review to the Moment of Madness, and this one is near and dear to my heart. And actually a topic I chose my damn self, not just entertainment news or any other. So, um, you know where to reach me at all social media platforms at La La Madness. And also you can catch my YouTube videos um, at La La Madness. And also I'm on Spotify and Anchor as far as podcasts. And I also have a show that will be airing. Um, my shows will be coming out as well on a network very soon. So stay tuned. Now. Um, send me your emails or if you have comments about this particular show as well, make sure you put that in the subject and send that to lmfiercereview at gmail.com. And the topic of this one is actually an investigation finds that extended warranties um, fall short on coverage. So for all those out there that actually have an extended warranty on your vehicle, car, truck, SUV, whatever, your vehicle, then this is definitely for you and you definitely want to listen up because it also has my personal story involved in it as well with or personal story and experience rather um, involved in exactly how it happened to me and also um, it, how it happened to another man due to an investigation that was actually done by um, WSB TV channel 2 and I'll go ahead first and start with the actual news story um, which I actually had typed up my story a few days ago, but then this one dropped as well that's related to mine. So I decided to incorporate that to let you guys know that it's not just happening to me. And those that have actually had extended warranties know exactly what I mean. Okay, so a man named Joseph Weatherspoon in Atlanta acquired an extended warranty through Car Shield, who is who with who he went through the company Car Shield. Um, for his 2016 Chevy Impala, and he was actually making monthly payments on it of $86 a month. So some actually you can pay on a monthly basis for the warranty, and some you actually pay outright. So I chose to actually pay mine outright, and I'll get into that story in just a second, but he actually paid $86 a month for his coverage. Now the dealership actually said when he took his car in, that he needed a new transmission because the clutch pack inside had failed. Okay, um, They actually denied his claim stating that the clutch pack is not part of the transmission. So it was not covered under his warranty. Listen very closely. Now WSB TV um, and that's actually got to do with Clark Howard. He actually does the investigations um, on companies and certain products and things of that nature. Um, so WSB TV actually went and asked multiple mechanics what they thought of the assessment and they replied, quote, that's insane considering the clutch pack is inside the transmission and they go out all the time, which is a common problem, end quote. Um, they even showed them a diagram or showed the news people a diagram of the actual transmission and that the piece that went out is actually a part of or within the transmission itself, which means it will be considered a transmission issue. How the hell can you get to that part without going in the transmission itself? Problem solved. Fix the damn transmission, right? You would think that would be the 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 solve the way to solve the problem, but no, that's not what happened. So Weatherspoon actually called the warranty company and continued to get the runaround. They finally agreed that the clutch pack was part of the transmission, but the claim was still denied because the reason um, they said that the reason couldn't be. The, that couldn't be the reason that the transmission failed. How if, like I said, the clutch pack and other mechanics have stated, as well as the dealership, stated as well that it's inside of the transmission? That's obviously why the transmission itself failed, due to that piece or component. Okay. The news called the company and the man actually wants the news called now. Because they gave him the complete runaround. He couldn't get nobody. He was getting um, around the news. Even had a hard time getting through to somebody. But once they actually got through to a live person. He ended up getting a call back from the company. And got a check for $42,000. $42,000. Which will basically buy him two new cars. Okay. New ones. Now. They basically were. Um, the man stated as well. Um, the man Mr. Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon. 
uh, stated that they were basically looking for a way or in any way or another to not pay the claim. And that's exactly what they do. So when you go and purchase these warranties, you're expecting your damn car to be fixed because that's what you pay for a warranty for, especially if it's a major component like an engine transmission or something of that nature. Okay, depends on the type of policy that you get. It kind of goes like that. You want it to be paid for. Why the hell was he paying $86 a month when he could have saved his $86 a month and then went and just bought the damn fixed the problem when he needed to be fixed? I don't get what the hell the problem was. Now, being that they've done that investigation, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened to me. Um, and I actually went through Red Shield. That's red like the color red and shield warranty. If you get a warranty from them, watch the fuck out. I'm letting you know personally, period. The end of the investigation that Clark Howard did in regards to the other man's warranty, he stated that the only warranty you should really buy is the warranty from your dealership or the car maker itself. You get a Ford, get a Ford warranty. You get a Chevy, get a Chevy warranty. Vice versa. Go through the dealership to get your extended warranty. Do not get it from one of these old Rudy Poot ass Red Shield warranty or Car Shield like the other dude had. Okay? Just saying. Now, Red Shield, they actually have two locations that are listed. I did also do a BBB complaint and I'm waiting on them to reply to that because I ain't fucking around. They got the right one. I didn't go to um, three years of legal study school and for a minor in business. To not know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because they got the right one today. Okay. So now. They have two locations. Their first, one of their locations at the BBB list. I guess is their administrative location. That is um, 7381 West 133rd Street. Suite 200 in Overland Park, Kansas. 66213. And their phone number is 888-285-5950. Or 50 rather. On Google listing. It shows Red Shield Protection at 3550 North Central Avenue, Suite 800 in Phoenix, Arizona, 85012. Phone number 888-740-6170, which is the phone number that I dialed or that they give out for their customer service. Now, I happen to have paid $1,800 in cash, a debit payment, not by credit card, a damn debit payment for my warranty at the dealership. For coverage that included 36 months or 36,000 miles. Okay. My car broke down on July the 23rd, about a year after me having the car. And it was a 2016 Chevy Malibu, by the way. Now, I had the car sold to the auto shop on July 29th once I located my warranty information. Now, the auto shop stated that um, he was the man at the shop that I took it to. When I told him I have a warranty and should cover it, he was apprehensive and told me he did not want to um, deal with my car, basically, because he had another client come through with the same type of warranty I had, and they didn't want to pay the claim and gave them the runaround and a bunch of bullshit, and she ended up having to pay for it to get fixed herself. Now, if the man at the car shop tell you this shit, you might want to listen to his ass, but no, not me. I was like, oh, no. I assured him it should be okay. It shouldn't be a problem. The warranty is paid for, and I actually, I don't know what the coverage was that the man had, but I actually had a bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty, meaning if a headlight go out in that bitch, it should be covered, period. Bumper-to-bumper -bumper means everything on it. Okay. Last time I checked. Mm-hmm. So now, the auto shop actually contacted the warranty department on August the 2nd. On August the 5th, a third-party contract, so... The warranty, the man from the auto shop called and made the claim on August the 2nd, which was a Friday. On Monday, they sent the third-party contractor out to do an inspection, and they came to verify that the issue was what the man said that it was, which was my engine. Okay, a whole-ass engine in a damn near brand-new car. Okay, now, and apparently that's a problem with the Chevy Malibu and Impala. The transmission or their engine goes out, and that's because it's the turbo engine. And I've heard read up more on that as well. So those actually have issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, on Wednesday, 8-7, I contacted Red Shield to ask for an update. They said that they need oil change receipts to see if I had got my oil changes done on time. 
So, on 8-7 as well, the same day that I called and got the update, not that they called me to tell me that they needed these documents, but on 8-7, Wednesday, two days after the inspector came out, I called and they told me that they need these receipts. I then emailed the receipts to claimdocs at casadmin.com. Okay. On 8-8, I contacted them by phone. They claimed that they never did receive the documents. Upon further investigation of the email by the representative, they were actually discovered. But they claimed they didn't get them. Okay. They actually called the car man, the man where my car was at the shop, and told him they were not going to pay my claim because I did not send in the documents. But then when I called to ask them what the hell they talking about, they all, I all of a sudden found them. Okay. That's some bullshit. They was looking for a reason then. Didn't give it to them next. All right. Now, after calling constantly... I was contacted by the auto shop on 8-8 and told that Real Shield wasn't going to pay the claim because they didn't receive the documents. On 8-8, that's when I told you I contacted them and they confirmed the documents were received as well. Once they told this man though what they weren't going to do. Now, on 8-12, after waiting, I'm thinking the car is getting fixed at this point because you got what you asked for. On 8-12, I contacted them for an update. They told me they need all of my oil change records, not just the one I sent in. I did send them my last most recent. They wanted all of them. So I go to high ass Jiffy Lube, tell Jiffy Lube that I need a copy of my oil change records. I was provided with those, and they were also sent on that same day, 8 12, that I spoke with them. So every day that they tell me they need something, I send them the same day. There's no delay. There's no trying to figure it out or find it. You had it. Okay. I called in several times thereafter. There were no updates on the car. I was constantly told the adjuster was in review of it. And they did not have a timeline on the response of the um, adjuster, which was after 8-12. Keep in mind. Okay. I spoke with a representative by the name of Perseo Salas, P and who calls himself PC, by the way. And that's at the phone number that I already mentioned. P-E-R-C-Y-L, last name S-I-S-A-L-L-I-S, excuse me. And I inquired about the cancellation policy on 8-13. A rep I spoke with many times before, keep that in mind, every time I called in, I kept getting either him or one other female. So it's only the call center is very small, um, and he's in the claims department. So clearly, okay, um, it's not that many people that work there for you to keep getting the same two representatives. Okay. Um, and he said that it will be actually, it has been too, I, oh, when I spoke with him many times before, um, on 8-13, which it had been two weeks in this process at this point. Okay. I was emailed the information as far as the cancellation form, which I had went on their website myself and pulled the cancellation form and let the guy know, oh, I have a cancellation form myself. So is this something that the dealership is going to need to fill out in Section 2 because it states the dealership needs to fill it out? Oh, no, I don't know what cancellation form you're looking at. We don't have that cancellation form. That cancellation form doesn't exist. Well, how the hell I get it off the website? Clearly, you don't even know what you're talking about, or clearly that's something that you need to have taken down if you don't plan on people using that. Okay. So now, he emailed me the information needed, to, and he stated that I needed to get it signed and notarized in order to cancel. Although, um, like I said, I obtained that form there, okay, on their site. Okay, he also stated that they could not tell me the rate of the refund until you send in your cancellation form. Now, how the hell, if you ain't claimed or customer service, but then told me that they're the ones that get the cancellation forms as well. So how the hell you can't tell me how much my refund going to be, but then you can tell me that you can let me know after, after now, because they send the refund to the dealership and then you have to get the refund from the dealership. They're not mailing it to you. They damn self, they mailing it to the dealership or sending it on a wire transfer to the dealership. So now you're responsible for getting it from them. Okay, or they're responsible for forwarding it to you. However that works, that's pretty much what they explained to me. Okay, but you can't tell me how much it is. Ain't that your job? How do you not know? Now, in the contract, because I read all my contracts, it stated that it was gonna, that the rate of the refund is actually going to be pro rata based on a combination of both your months left on the contract as well as the mileage left on the contract. Now, those are two completely different numbers. If you know how pro rata works, you know, you take the amount of months left 
minus you know and then you can split it up about how much per month that would be and then you go ahead and minus how many months that is left okay so it's like I know that I have 23 months left on my contract it's a 36 month contract so therefore you will pay me out according to what I did not use which being I don't get how that makes sense because I didn't use none of it y'all didn't pay for shit so you should forward me all my damn money like a whole refund right you would think um, the mileage works the same way based on how many miles is left on the contract okay but they can't tell you until you send in your um, cancellation request which I think is a crock of shit as well okay um, and I have this information here I also have um, copied here the cancellation form that he sent me and it's just stated like some handwritten shit um, that you would just need to go get notarized not a official form that I think a business should have for uh, issues as such like, as a cancellation so the letter of cancellation must and this is from his email the letter of cancellation must include the following your full name date phone number address contract number current mileage of the vehicle reason for cancellation and it must be notarized once these steps are completed please scan the letter um, to your computer or take a picture of the cancellation letter to front and back as well including the notary seal and send it in to canx at redshieldadmin.com and then he put at the bottom of the email like he typed it in himself may take up to four to five weeks from the cancellation process date who the fuck about to wait four to five weeks to get their damn money back when you took my money instant through the process or the form of a debit like boop 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 get that eighteen hundred dollars right now after I pay twelve thousand dollars cash for a car then I pay eighteen hundred dollars cash for a fucking warranty y'all got y'all money right now why the fuck you think I'm about to wait four to six weeks but guess what that wasn't stated in my contract so unless y'all have a new contract where you know now you have a time frame on how long it takes to do it you can't just include in no damn email that it's gonna take four to six weeks or four to five weeks or whatever the hell you talking about no that's not how it works boo it's not stated in my contract that the time frame is gonna be four to five weeks so that means you must have revised your contract since my contract came out a year ago and my shit should be grandfathered in as ASAP yeah that's how that should go Mm -hmm. yeah all right so now I actually contacted the dealership on 815 and and the man stated they do not even sell red shield policies either even no longer they no longer sell those due to issues with it and they actually go with another carrier now which means they got a whole bunch of fucking complaints and calls and bullshit the same that I got okay he also stated that it's been too long and for me to not have been given an answer since they had my car all the way since the second and this is now the 15th and they still telling me they don't know what they gonna do whether they gonna pay for it or not and I've been waiting on my car to get fixed the whole time okay now I also let him know that I ain't no fucking dummy and I stated that this is causing financial losses and also it's been two weeks with no response I mentioned real shield deal offer did offer rental car reimbursement but according to my contract, as I read once again, it stated that it's for up to five days or up to $200. So being that it's been two weeks at this period, this is beyond the time frame of when they would have covered the car. So if I had got, the, uh, got a rental car from the time that the car was in the shop, which would be the second, well, technically it would have been way before that because I put the car on the shop on the 28th. The man didn't put in the claim to the second. So either way it go, those five days would have been the fuck up a long time ago, okay, period. But we'll go by the second according to when they found out the car was in the shop because it's not their fault that the man took five four, or four fucking days to call them and put the claim in, okay. Now, so um, if I chose that option, I would still be without a car for an additional two to three weeks. Now, reimbursement, once again, can only be used if there is money paid out of pocket already first and then I felt like I already paid eighteen hundred dollars for this rental car reimbursement and towing and everything else that comes along with this warranty that should already be covered so if I pay for it already why the hell do I need to sit here and pay for a rental car and wait for you to reimburse me for some shit no you should do just like any other insurance company do and I should be able to go 
get a car from the rent a car place and pull off in that bitch and y'all cover the bill that's how that should work but no reimbursement means i pay first and i wait on a check to come in the mail for these raggedy ass five days that y'all will give me a rent a car for okay I also inquired about the cancellation policy at the dealership. He stated that it goes both by the miles left and on the contracts and the months left, which once again would be the pro rata amount that I mentioned. Now, when I started to speak in legalities, he asked about the amounts um, and asked about the amounts, which one of them would be $300 left according to the miles left and $1,200 of a refund expected for the months left. So how do you go by both amounts? What do you do? Come to a median amount, take the 300 number, take the 1200 number, and you give me the number in the middle as far as a refund? Or how do you choose which one that you're going to pay me? Because if it's a combination of two, you can't just pick and choose that you're going to give me the one that's the less. That's not a combination. Yeah, you think somebody fucking stupid. No. And of course, the man at the dealership could not explain to me exactly which one or the exact amount it'll be when i start speaking them numbers and running them numbers on his ass let him know i've already figured out my pro rata for both amounts so which one is it going to be or how do y'all figure it out he don't know either so customer service don't know the claims department don't know the cancellation department don't know as well as the dealership themselves don't know how this is calculated so how the fuck y'all calculate it y'all just send people mystery checks you can't send in a mystery check to somebody you need to be able to give them how much this shit is going to be that's how that works Okay. Now, upon further investigation, oh, oh, I was told that by the dealership that he was going to contact Red Shield himself, the warranty place, and then he was going to contact me back because he can see that the claim amount is $2,000 to fix my engine, which is what the man put in for the claim. But there was no notes about the conclusion of it or what they decided to do or not. And this is as of the 15th, like I said. So they still ain't putting nothing in the system yet. Okay. It's supposed to be open still with no resolution. Mm -hmm. Now, upon further investigation, you know, my nosy ass, I be clicking. I be uncovering shit. I be investigating on my own. Now, there are 114 BBB, or for those that don't know what the BBB is, the Better Business Bureau complaints with the same issue. At all 114 expressed the same issue that I've had. They took their car to the shop. With a damn raggedy ass warranty, they paid all this money for. Some pay on a monthly set basis. Some paid it all up front. And their car is not getting fixed. Some people's car has been in the shop for months waiting to get fixed. In the meantime, these people that's waiting on their car to get fixed are incurring all these additional bills. Okay? Yeah. On A16, I contacted them for an update, which will be Red Shield. And they told me they were aware since the inspector came out on 8-5, which was the... That Monday that my car um, my car got there that Friday and I told you the inspector came out on the 5th, which will be that Monday, that it was documented in the file on 8-8. So it took them three days to do- update my file to say that they were not going to pay the claim, knew they weren't going to pay the claim because I had a lift sticker on my window, which means I was using it for commercial use. Now, let me tell you something about that. When you get a contract, it tells them if there's a check box, a box of checks, um, uh, excuse me, there's a box in the corner on the right-hand side, and there's options that you check off. If that option is not checked off, then guess what? They're not going to pay that claim. Like, I have a turbocharger or a turbo engine. If they don't check turbo engine, they're not going to pay for anything related to the engine. Turbo engine is checked. Commercial is an option there. But guess what the dealership didn't do? Now, had they asked me, am I going to be using my car for anything commercial related? I would have told them yes. They didn't ask me that. So it's the dealership fault because I'm going to sue their ass too. That's what's going to happen with this. Everybody getting sued. Red Shield, the dealership. Because due to you not asking me the right question, you didn't check it off on there. Because if you asked me, I would have told you. Yeah, I'm going to be using it for lots of business things because if i have a fucking appointment a business appointment um i'm going to actually use it to go whether it's sell insurance if that's for commercial use or anything okay now they claim that it was not checked on there and that um when i purchased the policy at the dealership like i said they didn't ask would it be used for that okay now there's many people and that's what I found out. They use their car for commercial reasons. 
Commercial um, use of a vehicle includes selling insurance, like I mentioned, any sales positions in the field, maids or housekeepers, food delivery, real estate agents and inspectors and appraisers, and appraisers plumbers, repair people, county and government officials um, that are not using government vehicles. And I have found a few people that have had these occupations and they have had their car repaired. Guess who fucked up? Red Shield. That's who fucked up. Mm -hmm. Because how can you not, if the dealership don't ask you if you're going to be using your car for this, then you're not going to, I haven't checked on there. And once I pay for a car, I don't feel like it's any of your damn business to determine what the fuck I'm going to be driving around in my car doing. If I want to sell insurance today and I need to drive to somebody's house, that now turns into commercial use. But how I'm going to get there? You want me to catch the bus in the car that I, versus the car that I pay for to go handle some business and I am in sales or in any of those other fields that I mentioned? Bullshit. Okay. Keep in mind, at this time, I hadn't driven for Lyft in about six months. I just still had the sticker on the car. Mm -hmm. It's not like I was doing it or driving for Lyft at the time the car broke down. That's not what happened. Lyft hasn't been used in six months. And I have proof of that because I can log in and they can tell you my last fucking ride. Mm -hmm. Now, on 820, I attempted to pick up my car from the auto shop. The man told me he wanted $90 for diagnosing my vehicle. Okay. I called into Red Shield and explained to the rep what they said from the dealership or from the auto shop, rather, excuse me. And they actually hung up on my ass because I asked them who supposed to pay this man this $90. Y'all supposed to pay it because y'all asked for the diagnostics to be done and to be sent to y'all. They told me after I called that bitch back. And uh, happened to get the same person. That's the bad part about when you try to hang up on somebody and it ain't that many of y'all. When I call back, I'm going to get you again. That's what happened. Oh, I don't know how it got disconnected. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. It did get... Yes, you hung up on me. That's how I got disconnected. Bitch, I worked in the call center for lots of years. I know exactly how to fucking hang up on somebody. It ain't no oops. It ain't no mystery button. It ain't no none of that. None of that happens. You click and hang up. Ain't no, oh, my bad. Okay, but I got your ass again, so that was fine. Now, she apologized for accidentally hanging up, and then she stated the claim was originally, so I asked about more um, in-depth information about this canceled claim, since they claimed that, that um, they knew that they wasn't going to pay it since the 8th, because she thought I didn't know that information. Now, she claimed it was canceled August the 8th and reopened to ask for the oil change receipts. Now, if you knew you wasn't going to pay for it after the 8th, why would you then fucked up once again, Red Shield, or reopen the claim to call to for when I call in to ask me to go get oil change receipts? Because they didn't have a reason to deny my claim. What they needed was for me to not have went and got my oil changes done and let that have been a reason for them to be able to deny my claim. But that didn't work because I forwarded them all to their ads and I got them done on time. My car does not need to have oil change except for every 5,000 miles. And I know how to put oil in my damn car in between then. I know how to read the fucking stick. And I also have a car that tell me on the dash you need fucking oil. Simple. I also know how to check it under the hood. So what the hell? No, it ain't no shit I did. It's some shit that happened with y'all raggedy ass engines that Chevrolet put in there. All right then, which is why I paid for $1,800 for a damn warranty for you to fix that. Okay. Now, this further proves that they knew that they were not going to pay the claim on the date that they sent me. And then on the 8th, after the 8th, sent me on a wild goose chase for nothing, which caused me additional financial hardship. I miss money and all kind of shit. And also that was done with malicious intent. Mm hmm. Because you maliciously knew you weren't going to pay us since the 8th, reopened it, sent me to go get all these things, and you knew all the way from back then. Because you had me send more oil change receipts on the 12th. So y'all already knew. But y'all, when y'all got those, y'all was mad that y'all got those and had to come up with another reason. But then y'all said y'all already knew y'all weren't going to pay it because of the lift sticker way back on the 8th. So which one is it? Okay, got your ass again. So the issue is now malicious intent to cause financial hardship and damages both financially and emotional distress for not providing me with an answer on 8-5 or 8-8 when documented instead of having to me obtain oil change records. Since the calls are recorded for quality insurance, 
It should not be hard because when you call in, they tell you this call is monitored and recorded for quality assurance and training purposes. Well, it shouldn't be hard for me to get those call records and have them sent to my attorney for further review. And on each one of those, it's going to show how y'all bullshitted and gave me to run around and told me y'all didn't know this, this, that, and the third. Bullshit. You still ain't made a decision. You don't know when they're going to make a decision. They didn't make a decision until after the day, the day after the man from the dealership called them. And you know what? I haven't heard back from the dealership either. The man that was supposed to call me and give me an update. You know why? Because he know that it's his fault. He never asked me if I was going to be using it for commercial use. Whether that was going to, now, if I didn't have a lipstick on the window, it didn't matter. They still was going to try to prove that I didn't get the oil change. They was going to try to prove something, anything. But being that I did get the oil change, but then you tried to fuck me around and have me running around doing that when you already knew that you wasn't going to pay it from the beginning due to a lipsticker. But if I told you in the beginning, I sell insurance. I have to go on business meetings. I have to meet people here or there. That is regardless of a six month old ass lift sticker that is still for commercial use just like i mentioned in the rest of those occupations so i took it upon myself that whole thing that i just told y'all i copied and pasted it and did a bbb complaint and i also sent in my cancellation form now and i the same just like i told y'all so now four to six weeks is not what happened i actually got an email two days ago with them telling me that my cancellation has been um done and i should get i need to get with my dealership because that's where they're sending a the refund to in order for them to process my refund Mm -hmm. so yeah four to six weeks aren't no so that's a lie so they just tell people what they want to tell them just like i told them i should be grandfathered in and it should be asap so what i'm telling you guys okay they're gonna send me my refund and i'm gonna handle my shit on my own uh, I'm not about to, but I could have just saved $1,800 from paying these motherfuckers. Now they want to send me a little bitty short ass check on something I never used in the first place. But by the time I finish suing them, they going to send me a $42,000 check. Just like how they sent that other man about his bullshit because they got me fucked up. I'm not stupid. Any losses that I've suffered, any emotional distress that I've suffered for these weeks waiting on them while they playing games with me, thinking my car is getting fixed with a old whack ass five day rental car coverage when it's been weeks since my car has been in the shop. Who you think you playing with? Do not get a warranty unless you go through your actual the maker of the car. Get an extended warranty through them once your powertrain warranty ends. That's all I'm going to say, but I will be suing. This is not a, a little threat. This is a promise. You're going to get sued for my time, for damages, and also for playing with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, on that note, send me your, if you have actually had a real shield warranty or any other car warranty and you have experienced a similar problem. Please reach out to me because I would love to hear your story because I'm going to incorporate it in further updates that I'll have as well once I find out more because I'm going after the dealership too. I'm blaming everybody. The dealership, Red Shield, it don't matter. But the man ain't called me back from the dealership because he know he fucked up too and he know Red Shield fucked up and he know what time it is. That part. Okay. All right. And um, once again, I'm sorry, send those emails to lmfiercereview at gmail.com. Also, reach out to me on all social media platforms at La La Madness. And also, um, check out my podcast on Spotify and also Anchor. And check out all of my videos on YouTube. Look forward to hearing from you on this subject related to car warranties. Dying to hear. Let me know. La La Madness. I'm out. All right.